then if everyone is dependent on a few big corporations and corporate farms, and then if that area gets wiped out for some reason, everybody starves. Uh, or if the transportation system has a problem, if the price of oil gets too high, or, if, or it becomes too scarce for uh, shipping produce over long distances, then what's going to happen? Uh, everyone is dependent on foreign produce. Everyone in the U.S. especially is eating imported uh, fruits, vegetables, grains. Almost everything is imported. And so the cost of transportation is added to the cost of the food, makes it very expensive and so on. And what are they doing in the U.S. with the farms there? They're raising corn to feed animals for slaughter. This is the most wasteful thing. It's wasteful of water, it's wasteful of land, it's wasteful of life itself. You can't take any one of these animals once they're killed and give them back their life. Nobody can do that. So what right do we have to take that life if we can't give it? See, Krishna can give life, but nobody, nobody else can give life. Therefore, we have no right to take their life. This killing animals is the most destructive thing. You look at any uh, examination of the statistics of meat eating, raising meat for slaughter, and you'll find it's very wasteful. It uses much more water, much more soil, much more infrastructure, much more capital, uh, and causes more waste and pollution and so on per gram of protein than uh, making a complete protein from mixing grains and beans. Huh? We could be using the same millions of acres that are used to raise corn to raise grains and beans and feed the whole world just from America's farms. You see? Because the uh, efficiency is something like, I don't know, 50 to 1. Huh? So just for the pleasure of the taste of this meat, uh, the taste of blood, the taste of flesh. We're mismanaging, misusing so much of valuable resources. Driving the cost of food way, 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 way up. It's totally unnecessary, totally stupid. So, let's learn how to stop this nonsense. And let's take responsibility for giving this knowledge to the people that we care about in our local areas. Let's take responsibility for uh, spreading this knowledge. Huh? It's so easy to invite your friends and show them this video. What's the problem? It's on YouTube. You can download it to your computer from our site. You can invite a few friends, show them the video, and then discuss. Huh? Give them a little nice prasadam, nice vegetarian food, and show them. You see how wonderful this process is, huh? this esoteric teaching this Vedic knowledge. This is going to last longer than the materialistic meat-eating civilization. Why? Because we already know a better way. Uh, we've known for thousands of years this better way. At one time India was the richest, strongest country in the whole world. The, the British were so envious uh, that, what was that guy's name? Lord. Uh, I want to say Fauntleroy, but that's the, <laughs> some British lord made a, a speech, a public speech before, what is that called, the, the British Council? House, House of, of Lords, Lord. House of Commons or whatever it is, yeah. That, oh, this India, this India is, is so rich, it's so opulent, we can't let this continue. Mm -hmm. huh? We have to convince them that their culture is no good. That's the only way we're going to be able to defeat them. So they started this huge campaign of propaganda to convince the Indians to give up their culture and accept Hinduism. And Hinduism, Hindu is a racial slur. It comes from the Persians who invaded India, I don't know, two or three times. So, first of all, they're taking a foreign name, uh, a demeaning racial slur, and making that the official religion of India. And besides that, it's a compromise. Huh? It's a compromise that says, 
well, the Vedas are okay, but then the Bible's okay, and the Talmud's okay, and the Quran's okay. Even though they all contradict one another. Huh? Even though all the other religions in the world say that God is ultimately impersonal, and ours is the only spiritual knowledge in the world that recognizes the personality of God yet. Huh? Even though none of these other religions have any knowledge about the soul or about the spiritual world or any of that, and even though they're just speculated by some guy off in a cave uh, who had a, a hatred of the Vedic culture and wanted to destroy the Vedic culture, even though all these things are true, uh, they're all equal. Well, that's a lie. And whenever you believe in a lie, it disempowers you. You see? Just like one of our students was writing me, oh, my mother is very depressed because her husband just left her after so many years of marriage and he had all these affairs over so many years and she tried to remain faithful to him but then at the end he left her anyway and there's even uh, uh, illegitimate children involved and it's a whole big mess. So I wrote him back and said well first of all she's not going to gain anything by lamenting but second of all she has to see that because she didn't leave him after the first affair, she is responsible for his continued illicit sexual affairs. She is an enabler. She became his, uh, uh, by tolerating it huh? and not stopping it right in the beginning, she is partially responsible for what happened. She doesn't want to see this at all. She wants to blame everything on other people. But you, you see how actually we are responsible for our condition. Anything that happens in our lives is a result of our previous activities, karma. We talk about karma all the time. But when it comes to the time of actually taking responsibility for what we did in the past that's causing our present suffering, oh, no, no, it's somebody else's responsibility. They did it to us. Well, if they did it to us, then we can't make any solution, can we? You see? So that disempowers us. But if we take responsibility, oh, whatever is happening in my life is my responsibility based on my activities, then I can change my activities and I can improve my life. So we've all made choices. Don't say, I didn't choose to be involved in this corporate society. I didn't choose to have to rely on centralized production of food and, and uh, necessities? Yes, you make that choice every moment. Every moment that you don't get up off your butt and go out and get a piece of land and learn how to grow your own food, you are perpetuating the system by your inability to choose the right path. And because of those choices, continued choices over many, many, many years, now you're in the fix that you're in where you're dependent upon other people who do not have your personal interest in mind for all the necessities of life. You have disempowered yourself. So we're saying, no, take this knowledge, take this power, make the choice, change your activities, change your lifestyle, change your situation. Huh? Everything's going to change anyway. Because it's 2012. Huh? Wake up and smell the incense. All right? It's 2012. Everything's going to change anyway. So you might as well make it change in such a way that it's good for you. Take reality by the horns. Huh? This might be your last chance. This might be your only chance. If you're seeing this video for the first time, if you've never seen any of our other videos or our other programs, take this knowledge and run with it. We don't care whether you join our group or not. Huh? But we're just spreading this knowledge, broadcasting this information, so that people who have some intelligence can take it and run with it and do something with it. We want the whole world to have this knowledge. Whether it benefits us directly or not doesn't matter because we already have this, the benefit. Huh? It doesn't matter if people like us or they don't like us. It doesn't matter whether people send us donations or not. 
Huh? We have the money thing figured out. But we don't care. We care about the truth. We care about giving you the knowledge that you need to actually make your life better. Huh? We're like Bill Gates, you know? We're like giving this stuff away for free just to help people, but not in a material way, in a spiritual way. And of course, if you accept spiritual knowledge, you'll also benefit materially. That's a given. Because the material is the effect of the spiritual. So if you decide to advance spiritually and you take this knowledge, become vegetarian, start chanting the holy name, start uh, offering all your food to God, huh? you will benefit materially. You'll get a lot of material help from spiritual sources. Huh? Because God is all-powerful. If you please God, you think he's not